Hey and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I am Diana, creator of Money Boss Mama, where I teach women how to become a money boss from the inside out. But recently I've gotten a lot of messages from women who are single moms who want to know more about how to incorporate your kids on your financial journey. So I did ask you guys to ask me some questions about being a single mom and money. So in this video, I am gonna be answering the first round of questions. I am gonna break it up into two videos because no one has time to watch a 40 minute video. So this is gonna be part one to answering you guys' questions. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. I did kind of combine the questions that kind of sounded the same um, or were around the same topic. So the first question was, how do you incorporate your kids on your new financial journey? And how do you get them to understand the sacrifices that you are making? So I chose this one first because I feel like this was probably one of the toughest things that I had to deal with emotionally on this journey because as moms, we are moms, we want our kids to have everything that we didn't have. We don't want our kids to feel like they have less than the other kids. And there's so many things we want to give our kids, but the reality of it is that right now that is not possible and that's a tough thing to accept. So I feel like you have to be really confident whenever you are taking this new financial path because depending on the age of your kids, like they know when you lack confidence and they'll be able to like, play on that lack of confidence and weasel their way into getting whatever it is that they want. And as far as how to um, approach them when it comes to your new financial journey, I think it all depends on your kid's age. So if they are like babies and toddlers, they don't know what the heck is going on. So it's a lot easier with them. Like with my son, he's three and he was born during my debt-free journey. So my frugalness is all he knows. Whereas with my daughter, she's eight and she was with me during the time where I had my credit card days and she has obviously shifted with me to a debt-free journey. So with her, it was a bit more challenging um, and I noticed that the older that she gets, the more she's realizing what we don't do and what we don't have. So she is whining a lot more. So the way that I approach it with her is I try to bring it down to her level. And I, instead of just talking at her and, and saying, we can't afford this, I will ask her a series of questions so that she can come to her own conclusion about what we should do. So recently, um, her, someone, a classmate, her mom got a new car. And our car, she's a little raggedy. She's not the cutest. We've had her, I've, I had her, I got her like a day, I say her, the car, a day before I had my daughter. So the car is all she knows. So she's whiny, she wants a new car, she's not understanding why we can't get a new car. She's like, we need to get a new car. Ours is old, ours is dirty, yada, yada, yada. So whenever she does this, I will ask her a series of questions. So she does know our goal is to move out of our apartment and get our own duplex. And she's really excited about painting the rooms. That is what lights her up. So I play on that. So I said, okay, if we get a new car, we're gonna have to give up a portion of our money. Is that gonna help us get out of this small apartment faster? And I use words that she uses. So she always complains that our apartment is small compared to everyone else's house. And she'll say no. So she'll probably whine when she says it, but she says no. And instead of just leaving it at no, I kind of just keep going on to make sure that she's really comprehending why we cannot go out and get a new car and why we have to keep our little cheap raggedy car. So I'm like, okay, if we keep our car, we get to keep our money, which means we can save for our duplex faster and then you'll be able to paint your room faster. So do you really think that we should get a new car and stay in our small apartment longer or should we keep the car that we have, the car where there's really nothing wrong with it and then you'll be able to move out and paint your room? 
obviously she's going to say we should keep the car and she does every single time she's not always very happy about it but i just kind of keep it simple keep it at her level and just let her come to her own conclusion and also remember that in the beginning like it's new it's new to them it's new to you especially if you have shifted from being a, a spender to now a saver they may not really understand the shift the shift may be very overwhelming to them so just give them grace and time to adjust and as far as incorporating them on your journey one thing that i like to do is incorporate my daughter into my budget planning so just recently we decided together that we would use some of our personal funds in our budget to be able to go out to eat once every two weeks so every week on a payday i get paid every two weeks so every payday week we will go out to eat and we've allocated a certain amount for eating out just so we can spend time together and actually get out of the house and depending on your kids age you can incorporate them in the budget planning process um, as far as what goes in how much you allocate things like that or you can sit down if they are of age and they have a job i don't see why it wouldn't be beneficial to have them get on a budget as well that way you are all both on the same level and they're going kind of like going through the journey with you and you are also increasing their financial literacy at a young age the next question was how to set up a college fund for your child how to save for educational expenses um, and how to start building wealth for your kids. So obviously this is the big shebang. This is um, our main goal, I feel like, as single women to set our kids off on a good start whenever they leave our home and to build wealth for them. So generational wealth. For my daughter, she does have a 529 savings plan, which is basically a plan that allows you to save for educational expenses, such as tuition, room and board and books supplies things of that nature so the cool thing with a 529 plan is that you don't have to open up your state's 529 plan just because you live in a certain state does not mean that you have to take that state's plan so if you live in georgia but you like um california's plan better you can open up california's 529 plan for your child and earnings are tax-free and your withdrawals will never be taxed so long as they are used for qualified expenses. And now I will say that um, that is the one thing that's kind of eh about 529 plans is that it has to be a qualified educational expense. Otherwise, you will be hit with a penalty, which is like 10%, and state or local taxes may apply on top of that 10% penalty. And one concern of a lot of parents is that a 529 plan is actually seen as an asset, so it may affect financial aid eligibility. Now, through my research, um, I did see this concern a lot, but through my research, I did find that the effect may be minimal. And the way that I see it is I would rather send my daughter to college with a savings plan, so with money put back for her, versus sending her to college with nothing at all and then relying on financial aid. I don't want my child to be buried under student loan debt. So to me, this was a risk that I was willing to take and that was just one of the cons that I was willing to overlook. Now, another great way to save for your child's educational expenses or to just build wealth in general is with a Roth IRA. And for kids, it's called a custodial Roth IRA. This is a type of um, individual retirement account. And just like with the 529, your earnings are tax-free. But the thing with the Roth IRA is that you can make withdrawals at any time on your contributions uh, without any taxes or penalties. So basically, uh, you have more flexibility as to uh, what your money can be used for and i did want to open one for my three-year-old when i was learning about it i'm like okay this sounds great um the money is still invested like it is with a 529 plan but the thing with the custodial roth ira is that your child has to have earned income it doesn't have to be through like you know a job they don't have to punch a clock but if little sally has a lemonade stand or billy bob is mowing lawns around the neighborhood um, that is still considered earned income so um, that's they would still take that but with my three-year-old obviously he has no earned income so 
I'm not able to open up a Roth IRA, but another great way is with a high yield savings account. A high yield savings account is basically a savings account, but you earn more in interest than you would at like your local bank. And this is a great way to start saving money for kids that don't have earned income yet. And then whenever they become of age to be able to have earned income in whatever way they're, able, they're earning money, you can roll over that money to your Roth Roth IRA that is my plan for my son and for my daughter as well whenever they become of age just take those contributions and put them into a Roth IRA next question is how to manage pop-up expenses like clothes school etc and how to manage forgotten slash unexpected expenses really when you think about it clothes and shoes are not really pop-up expenses you know that your kids grow like weeds and you know when the school year starts it seems like the school is always needing money so it's not really pop-up expenses it just sounds like it's expenses that were forgotten about because they are so irregular so obviously the best thing to do is to be proactive so when you know that a new season is approaching your kids are probably going to be needing clothes. Like with me, um, when it's winter time right now, but I know that the spring and summer are going to be coming. Obviously, this is not something that is just shocking. We know that the seasons change. So I know that I need to be planning for spring and summer clothes. So what I will actually do is set up a fund for spring and summer clothes as well as you know when the school year starts and you know that the school is going to be finding something to be asking you money for so in the summertime you can start preparing by setting up a fund for school activities etc this was actually something that i just recently did for this school year like for lunches i set aside a portion of my money for school in a fund that way when the school year started, I was not stressing out and wanting to cuss at my budget because the school was asking for money every other week. Now that these expenses are fresh on your mind because you forgot about them, you can set up little mini sinking funds, which are basically savings accounts for specific goals that are often short term, like a vacation. And this way you can put back smaller contributions versus coming up with large chunks of money because you did not pace yourself. And this doesn't have to be in a separate bank account. It doesn't even have to be in a savings account. You can withdraw these amounts in cash and keep it in a piggy bank, just however you wanna go about it. You know that you need one for maybe school, clothes, things of that nature. Anything that you are forgetting that um, kind of pops up irregularly, you want to set up a sinking fund for. And this way, whenever those things come around, you have money set aside for those specific expenses. And I know that we are not all perfect patty. I am not perfect patty. I forget things all the time. But one thing that has really saved my butt was a miscellaneous fund or is my miscellaneous fund so this fund is for basically no specific expense which is why it's called miscellaneous and i will have ten dollars of each paycheck go to my miscellaneous fund it just basically sits there with no specific job and this way every time i get paid it's building up on itself and when something pops up i can just pull it from that fund to help cover my butt i recommend setting aside like five to fifteen dollars and putting it in a miscellaneous fund it doesn't have to be kept in a bank account you can withdraw it in cash that way it's easily accessible but this way when something pops up that's not necessarily an emergency you have something to pull from and it won't disrupt your budget and blow it up into flames because those funds were for that specific purpose even though they really don't have a purpose next question is how to find money for extracurricular activities so the fastest and easiest thing for me was always going straight to my budget especially the non-essentials what is in there that is not absolutely necessary that you can cut and or reduce in order to free up more money to fund those extracurricular activities and i love doing this because if you are not new here you know that i hate side hustling i did it mind you i did it but i did not enjoy it and to this day i will do whatever i can to avoid a side hustle 
And doing this, you don't have to get a side hustle because the savings are instant. When you cut and or reduce something out, you, you just freed up money instantly to be able to apply to other things. And also, you have to really sit down and ask yourself, is a little Billy playing baseball worth me cutting my cable and just sticking to Netflix? And if you said yes, then that's where sacrifice comes in. So yes, the, the hairs on the back of your neck just stood up, but sacrifice is gonna have to come into play when it comes to this, because especially if you are working on one income, your children, their extracurricular activities is not as exactly um, an essential. So you have to match up that non-essential with the non-essentials in your budget and figure out what can stay and what can go. Besides knocking out your non-essentials, if there's really nothing in your budget that you can really adjust, then consider increasing your income. That's gonna be basically the only way that it's going to work. And you can sit down, what I did when I started side hustling, I made a list of three skills, three of my skills, and then out to the side of each skill, I wrote down how I could monetize each one. And then depending on which one lit me up the most, which one I felt like would be the easiest for me and also the most lucrative, I went with that one. And for me, it was writing. So I went on Google and found some opportunities to be a freelance writer. So I did that for a little while. And so I used my budget and my freelancing to pay for my daughter's gymnastics and her dance class whenever she was doing extracurricular activities. Um, that way I did not have to cut out so much from my budget. I just reduced my personal funds a little bit and then I side hustled for the rest. And when you're side hustling, you don't have to do it consistently. So it's not something that you have to do like a, a part-time job or a full-time job. It could just be whenever you need that extra money. It's something that you do irregularly, but it helps to bring in extra cash to help you cash flow activities that really mean the most to your kids. And also y'all know that I love maximizing extra money. So I'm talking about tax refunds, bonuses, stimulus checks, whatever it is that you get that is extra. Cause um, consider setting up a fund and then setting aside at least six months or however long the season is into that fund. And it doesn't have to be something that is coming up. It's just the potential extracurricular activity that you know your child may be interested in. That way, when the season approaches, you're not scrambling trying to come up with ways to make money or having to strip your budget down to bare bones in order to allow little Billy to play baseball because you already have that money set aside. Someone commented that they needed help juggling it all financially. They do get child support, but it goes to daycare and they feel like their money is tied. I feel like every parent knows well, every parent whose child goes to daycare, that the cost of daycare is ridiculous. Like it is insane. So if you have child support that covers such a large expense, you can still put yourself in a winning position. And I feel like it's easy to feel like your money is tied up and you don't have enough if you are not clear as to what you are trying to accomplish financially. So if you, uh, if I asked you, what are you trying to accomplish financially? And whatever response that you have is as broad as I'm trying to stop living paycheck to paycheck, or I want to pay off debt, or I want to save money. That's probably why you feel like your money is tied up and that you don't have enough to really do much is because you lack a clear focus. So if your goal is to pay off a $4,000 student loan balance or to put $2,500 in an emergency fund, you have a clear set vision. And that way, whatever you need to do to get there is gonna be a lot clearer as well. And it's not gonna feel like your money is so tied up because whatever it is that you have that's freed up is gonna to go to that specific goal, which means that you're seeing progress a lot faster because it's only going to one thing. If 
that makes sense. So since you don't really have to worry about daycare, I'm assuming since your child support covers it, that frees you up to focus on other areas of your budget. So considering your main goal, ask yourself, what is it that I can do to start making progress towards this goal? And you're gonna start seeing opportunities uh, that you didn't really notice before because you weren't really clear as to where you were trying to go with your finances. Um, and even if your money is tight, you may be only to apply an extra five to ten dollars to that specific goal but when you stay consistent obviously eventually you are going to start seeing that progress happen a lot faster as you're building your snowball um, and then you'll be able to free up more money and remember that your child is not going to be in daycare forever i think pre cool preschool preschool starts at like four years old my plan when my child turns four is to get him out of daycare asap so also be thinking in your head when your child gets out of daycare what you can apply those child support funds to to really maximize your income so this wraps up part one to the single mom money chat i do hope that these questions and answers were really helpful to you if you are a single mom and you are on a a financial journey comment below how you are going about it and some ways that you are building wealth for your babies and until next time i will catch you on the next one